Rebuilding three Stuart steam plants part 10. Running the early Stuart 10H engine using the whetstone and rotary abrasive wheel to clean the main bearings and then using my tumbler polisher to clean the other brass, copper and gunmetal parts for the score engine. I'm about to give the engine a test run on compressed air and you can see how badly all the parts are leaking around the steam chest. This will need rectifying. This pulley on the crankshaft for driving the governor is a bit wobbly. I'll take care of that in the fullness of time. All I can do for the moment is see why the governor's not working and generally have a good look at the parts while I'm running it to see if any other problems develop. Also, I'm waiting for some parts now from Stuart Models before I can really continue with this. I tried to get the governor to work and to my surprise after a while it did start spinning but it was unreliable and unpredictable. This one's looking into. I'll stop speaking while the engine's running so you can hear what it sounds like. This clip is in slow motion and I'm applying some oil to the ram of the water pump because the water pump is not working. I also fed some oil into the inlet and if you listen carefully you can hear the point when the ball valve inside the pump starts to work. It's very subtle but you can hear the ball coming off the seat. Anyway, now this water pump will actually pump water. You'll see this in due course in a future episode. I need to give this governor mechanism some attention. It doesn't feel good, it's very notchy and it sticks occasionally. I'll pull it apart and rebuild it. I really don't think the governor will work well in any case in this small scale, but I want it to spin round at least. Cleaning the non-ferrous parts on the whetstone and using my tumbler polisher. I'm lubricating the whetstone with ordinary lubricating oil because I really get sick of the smell of both WD-40 and 3-in-1 oil when I get it on my hands. This proper steam engine lubricating oil really doesn't smell very much at all. It's possibly a little thick for use with a whetstone, but it works and I'm cleaning up the parts successfully. The main bearing components are not going to go into the tumbler polisher. I'm cleaning these as shown here, first on the whetstone and then on the rotary abrasive wheel. This is the green one and it's not as coarse as the other colours, which is good for this job because I don't want to remove too much metal. I put the main bearing parts in with the rest of the engine's components on this piece of cardboard. I've just removed the connecting rods from the crankshaft. I'm not going to put the crankshaft itself into the tumbler polisher. It just seemed to creep into this image for some reason. Here's the tumbler polisher. First of all, you remove the top cap and it's already preloaded with the ball bearings. I'm adding this compound to the tumbler polisher. It's called Barrel Bright. It's a white powder and it helps with the cleaning and polishing process. You really don't need a lot of this in the mix and you don't need too much water either. Both of these items are essential for this tumbler polisher to work. The question is, which is the best speed to use for optimum polishing? This is on speed number two and also it's set to counter rotate. So it runs for a while, stops and then goes in the other direction. This is actually running at speed number one and I think it's a bit too slow. I think you need to make these balls really bounce. You can see what I mean when I turn it back onto speed number two. It's a much more energetic process and as you can also see the water is no longer clear as now it contains considerable grime from the metal parts that are being polished. I left this running in the workshop and I was in the lounge watching TV for about an hour and when I came back and had a look at the parts they looked quite shiny so I thought well that should be alright. 
There are considerable forces at work in this polishing operation. One of the steel balls got firmly wedged in a hole in one of the fittings. I tapped the steel ball out of the hole using a very small piece of brass rod. In these clips I'm emptying the polisher. And here are all the parts still a little bit wet on a kitchen towel. It's very important to clean out the polisher after use. Normally I tip all the steel balls into a sieve like this and then let them drain overnight. These are not stainless steel balls, they're the ones that came with the polisher, so I need to remove all traces of water from them to stop them from going rusty. And that's about all I can do in this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.